Well, after President Trump signed the coronavirus relief bill yesterday, House lawmakers are expected to vote on whether to increase the direct payments from $600 to $2,000. The House is also expected to vote on overriding the president's veto of that $740 billion defense bill. Now, the president struck down the military funding policy after explaining that the bill did not include changes to the Section 230, which provides a legal shield for big tech companies that he would like to address. Joining us now to discuss this, National Director of the Freedom Foundation, Aaron White. Uh, Aaron, I, a lot of people say that that uh, Section 230 issue didn't belong in a military bill, but, but it, it, it is a relevant question for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is. I think I, I think the president's absolutely right. Uh, I think he was right in signing the bill. President Trump is looking after American workers and the American people. I think that you compare that with Democrats that have uh, they want to bail out state governments and send American taxpayer dollars in foreign aid to other countries. While at the same time, we have businesses on home soil, especially in liberal states like I'm in right now, Washington state, that are closing down. That should be the first and foremost thing in this bill, uh, not any bailout of state governments or any exemptions for big tech. Yeah, Aaron, obviously the president wants those the $2,000 and so do a lot of Democrats, but some Republicans have voiced their concerns for it and may not vote for it. What do you think is going to happen? I think ultimately it will pass the House. The Senate, I think, has some question marks still. Uh, not exactly sure where they're going to fall uh, on the $2,000 specifically. But like I mentioned, it's the Democrats' agenda to increase this uh, this uh, $2,000 to go to American people. He's the one who wants to look after American workers. Um, and ultimately, we have Democrats that are uh, also siding with him. But the most egregious parts of this bill are the bailout of state governments. State governments have not suffered as a result of the coronavirus and the uh, shutdowns after the fact. It's small businesses and Americans that have suffered, and those should be the first people that are being looked after in this bill, not bailing out of state governments that haven't suffered at all. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you, especially when it comes to the, uh, some of the governors that have purposely shut down uh, their businesses. But it does raise the question of uh, whether their tax revenue is what they thought it would be, because in that way they are hurt by COVID. Although I, I'm sure you could make the, the argument that if you kept them open, you wouldn't be so short on the tax revenue, right? Yeah, I mean, they're mismanaging funds. Liberal governors, most of them have never ran their own businesses. They don't know how to balance a checkbook. They know how to spend money. They know how to raise taxes uh, on working Americans, but they don't know how to manage that money. And when you shut down businesses like they have, tax revenue is going to be completely down. They've mismanaged their funds for years, though. And I look at the retirement systems across these liberal states that are just bloating and we're also bloating government at the same time. They don't know how to manage these funds, which is why you're seeing them just shut down these businesses and at the same time expect to be bailed out by the federal government. It's total hypocrisy. And the ones that are going to suffer are the American taxpayers ultimately. Yeah, Aaron, we have the PPP, which a lot of business owners are, are happy about and hoping to move forward with this. But then we still have those states that are shut down and they're not even allowing these businesses to open. Yeah, this is America. People should be able to provide for themselves without uh, relying on the government to have to support them. I think that's the point. And in liberal states like we're in, in Washington, the rest of the West Coast, these businesses want to open. They don't want to take money from the federal government. They want to be able to provide jobs for people. They want to be able to provide services that people can enjoy. And instead, we have these governors that are completely overreaching and shutting them down. Frankly, I think that this bill, though it has some good in it, it's a slap in the face uh, to a lot of these business owners that need to be propped up right now. Because remember, this is a government mandated shutdown. This isn't the private sector uh, like we saw in the recession in 2008 that couldn't manage themselves. This is the government forcing businesses to be closed. Yeah. Aaron Witt, thank you very much, sir. Thank you.